If your BMW doesn't have Apple CarPlay, you are still stuck in the stone ages. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install probably the best Apple CarPlay unit I've ever used on these BMWs. It has wireless CarPlay, Android Auto. You can run full applications and videos on it. Customize the software exactly how you like. There's just so many options and different features that you can use on this CarPlay unit. And above all else, it's touchscreen. So let's go ahead and get right into this installation. I'm super excited to show you guys everything this can do. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is actually give ourselves enough room to remove this radio and actually install the new CarPlay. So go ahead and bring your BMW to accessory mode. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the car into drive and then kick it into sport mode. Go ahead and pull your parking brake up and now our car will stay secure while we have enough room to actually pull out this radio. And now we're simply gonna go ahead and unplug the vehicle's battery, just like that. So now the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is actually remove the shift knob just by pulling up on it. Just like that, our shift knob is removed. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is start off by removing this main dashboard panel right here. And choose a little pry tool and you can pry around the back of it to pull it off. And the reason why we're loosening this dashboard trim piece is actually that way we can remove our AC control panel because it's kind of held in with the dash trim. Sweet, now go ahead and remove the dash panel. So now we're gonna have these two connectors on the back. Go ahead and press in the little retention button and then these will slide forward and you can remove this connector. And now let's go ahead and remove this lower trim piece here since nothing's holding it into place anymore. So now we have the radio in a position to where we can easily remove it. So now what you're gonna go ahead and do is remove the four Phillips screws that are holding it into place. So let's go ahead and do that. Sweet guys, so now our radio is fully freed up and can slide out, but before we fully remove it, Go ahead and grab a microfiber towel and lay it out that way you don't scratch up the entire trim panel here. Now simply slide the radio forwards all the way. And now we have easy access to all of the connectors at the back of the radio. So now the next thing to do is go ahead and remove this radio connector at the back. There's gonna be a little latch here and you simply press upwards on it and that'll release this little latch and we can simply just slide it out. And now this connector is the only thing we actually really need access to. We don't have to pull out the entire radio. So what we're gonna do is get this harness set up so we can connect this to our new CarPlay unit. Perfect, and in my hand, we actually have the new CarPlay unit from Andream, and I'll have the link down below where you can get yours. That's actually gonna be our CarPlay unit itself. And here we have all the cables and etc. that we need to actually install on this BMW to give it CarPlay. Then you'll have this group of cables and wires. It's all one harness. So this is actually what we need first. Now we're gonna come back to this harness and we actually need to remove the optical cable. It's gonna be this green wire and this black braided cable as well. It's all tied into one harness, but this is what gives your car all of its sound. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this off. There's gonna be a little retention clip. You're simply gonna pull up on the clip and this harness will slide out of place. And now we're gonna go ahead and grab the new wiring harness that came with our CarPlay unit that looks identical to the one on the car but now we're gonna go ahead and grab that and actually insert the optical cable from your stock harness into this one right here. And that's gonna give us sound with our new CarPlay unit. And then from there, we can go ahead and install the new CarPlay harness, the one we just put our optical cable into, into the back of the radio. And now what you're gonna go ahead and do is grab the other end of that harness and connect it to the stock harness from your BMW. And that's basically gonna convert all of our audio and everything else over to the new CarPlay unit and let that take control. And now what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually remove our stock iDrive screen. And now your stock iDrive screen is just gonna be held in with two, should be T10 screws, but I've seen the size differ. So let's go ahead and remove those right now. And then our iDrive screen will simply slide forward and now we can actually remove the main harness on the back of it. This is gonna be what links the CAN bus system and everything to the iDrive screen. So let's go ahead and pull that out. And then we'll have one more connector. You can see this little purple one here and you'll simply press down on the retention tab, slide that out of place. Sweet, and then our old iDrive screen is now fully freed up. We can go ahead and put this off to the side. And now here in my hand, I have the new Apple CarPlay iDrive screen and it actually feels really good. It has some nice weight to it. As you guys can see on the side, we're gonna have our microphones and that's actually really good because having an outwards facing microphone means when you take calls and etc., it'll be nice and crisp. And now what you're gonna go ahead and do is grab this little power cord here and plug it up to the back of the new CarPlay screen, just like that. 
and make sure it snaps into place. And now here in my hand, we have one of the Wi-Fi antennas that comes with this unit. And now we'll go ahead and screw this in to the new CarPlay unit as well. And then here we have another cable. This is actually what's gonna allow us to plug our phone directly to the CarPlay unit. So go ahead and grab these little USB ports here and plug it into the new CarPlay unit as well. And now we'll go ahead and grab that purple cable that we disconnected from the OEM iDrive. And it'll actually install right here at the bottom. There'll be a little blue port here, snap straight into place. And now we have one last connecting point. And now this here, I'm not entirely sure what it is. I wanna say it's like a Bluetooth module, but it's actually gonna plug into that very last blue port that we have. And now the last connector we're gonna have that's showing is the stock iDrive harness. And this is actually not going to connect to anything at all. You're just gonna leave it off to the back of the car. It's actually not gonna plug into anything, so don't even worry about it. Sweet guys, and now that we have all the wires set up to the iDrive screen, we're gonna go ahead and test everything before we actually turn the car on. That way, if we have an issue, it's not a pain to remove it. Now we're gonna reconnect the battery just like that. And now coming back to the iDrive screen, we can see that it is powering on. So that is a very, very good thing. And now we're actually gonna place our vehicle back into park so we can fire up the car. And going around this new CarPlay unit, we can see the software does look great. It looks very OEM. It's very responsive. You can see here we have some gauge clusters and different things that we can activate using this CarPlay unit. And it looks really, really good overall. So far, first impressions wise, it doesn't look cheap. It doesn't look like a cheaper Android unit that you'd find in another older car. Actually, looks really good. You can see we have a full Google Play Store here where we can download apps. We can fire up YouTube and watch entire YouTube videos if you connect a SIM card and etc. So overall, first impressions, this thing's pretty sweet. And now something I noticed right off the bat is the iDrive knob is very responsive. I'm not having any lag issues. It's pairing up with this new CarPlay unit perfectly well. And now you will actually have to head into the settings to format the iDrive system because it will look extremely bad out of the box. So go ahead and head into the factory settings and insert the code 8888. And now from here, this is where you actually format the iDrive menu. So what I did was clicked automatically select, and this will basically automatically adjust the resolution to 1280 by 480. And now if you go to RGB, make sure you click falling plus RGB, because like I said, it is perfectly normal if the iDrive menu looks completely and totally butchered out of the box. And then here you have door status. You can turn that on and off. You can click on full screen. There's so many different options in here that you can enable and disable, but basically that's gonna set us up to where now when we go to the iDrive menu, everything looks OEM and factory and high resolution. And as you guys can see here, now that we're in the iDrive menu, the navigation, everything looks perfectly fine. It looks exactly how it should. And now here, this is the final cable we're gonna have to install, and it's gonna be the included aux cable. And to install this, just simply go ahead, locate your aux port in the glove box. And now we'll go ahead and plug this up. And now what we're gonna go ahead and do to actually test that our audio works, is just go ahead and locate the aux plug-in on the back of the new CarPlay system. And we'll simply just go ahead and plug this up. All right guys, so now to connect our phone to this CarPlay unit, go ahead and click phone link here. And now you'll see it'll come across Bluetooth name, it'll say it. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab our phone. And then you're gonna see right here, it's gonna say BM and a whole bunch of numbers and letters. That's gonna be the CarPlay unit. We can see it's connected. And if we actually look at the screen here, we're gonna see it's connecting currently. So it's gonna show a little loading bar. And now on the phone, go ahead and hit use CarPlay. And then back to the screen, it's gonna go ahead and load up and then it should launch us straight into our Apple CarPlay. Sweet guys, so we can see here, we have a lot of good music. We got some Nav, we got some, what is this, 50 Cent? We got uh, some nice mixes here. But now what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually make sure everything works. Let's do calling right here. Just to save you, I give and then yeah guys, as we can see, the car is fully turned on now and the Apple CarPlay works. So now we know we're not gonna have any voltage issues or anything crazy. And guys, I have to let y'all know, this CarPlay unit is extremely responsive. The iDrive unit works right off the bat. There's no issues, there's no lag, there's no delays. The colors are super vibrant. And overall guys, it looks 
very, very good. And then all of our steering wheel controls work perfectly. Our volume buttons are raising the volume in the car. You can click the change source button and it'll do radio or car play. Our voice control buttons work. We can switch songs a little forward and backward right here. And as you guys can see, as we click the button, it's switching our songs. So that works perfectly fine. So now that we tested our CarPlay works, let's go ahead and situate all these wires. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is tuck this huge big box adapter in the very back right corner. Go ahead and bring out these two cables here. Make sure they don't get tied up in the back. So pull those off to the side up here. And now we need to route this cable up through the top to connect to the CarPlay. So now we're gonna have to go ahead and remove this wooden trim so we can tie our cables down and make it look all neat. All right, sweet. So now I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of how I have everything routed. So I'm gonna pull out the iDrive screen itself. And we can see we have everything routed down beneath. And then here where our USB ports are, this is where the wired CarPlay is gonna fit into and so I trace that around to the side here the little hole around the back not the front but the back of this panel to the top around the back of the air vent through the back of the iDrive to the iDrive screen here and then now our aux cable extremely important I did the same thing I routed it down around the back side around the back of the vent you can see it still tracing here and now what I did with the aux cable was I actually traced it right here where the trim is gonna go around through the bottom. And then I actually had it come out through where the parking brake is and then straight here into the actual aux port itself. You have to keep in mind the radio is gonna flush right back in, the AC vent's gonna install back in. So you can't have cables coming out over the front plates because they're gonna get caught up with the radio. So you have to go around the back of everything and then tuck these cables off to the side at all times. So we'll pull them off to the side and now let's go ahead and fit the radio in. Sweet guys, so now we went ahead and reinstalled all the trim panels and made everything look a lot more flush and clean. So just to show you guys what's going on now, we situated all the wires back in between. We have our wires here so we can put our trim piece back on. We did all of our cabling underneath this trim panel here. So if we trace it around and we open this up, we can see that we have our aux cable here down all the way underneath and around the backside of everything. And now with the radio, we really had to push it into place a little bit beyond my comfort zone, but it's ended up seating just right. All of our bolts screwed in. And yeah, guys, everything is fully secured. So let's go ahead and put that front face plate on. Go ahead and replug in our connectors here for our AC control panel. We're going to go ahead and install our lower panel here before we actually put this into place. Make sure it's all nice and seated and flush. And now we'll go ahead and trace this through. And now you'll have to kind of pull out the trim piece a little bit, just like that. And now go ahead, stamp that into place like so. And now we can go ahead and fit our middle trim piece back into place. Everything is nice and flush. Everything's reinstalled properly. So now let's go ahead and bolt in our little iDrive screen here. And now there's so much you can do on here, guys. You can use full applications, all sorts of stuff. You can check your email, Google Maps, YouTube, etc. But there's so much that you can do on this system. I think it's so sick that you can run a full set of little gauge clusters here. That is absolutely 10 out of 10 in my books. But that is how you install this fully touchscreen wireless CarPlay unit in your BMW E90 or E92. This Apple CarPlay unit is an absolute game changer for your BMW's interior. To be fully touchscreen, have wireless capabilities, have multiple themes that switches up how it looks, be able to run different apps and softwares and videos as well. And really that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many features that this thing comes packed with. And above all that, it's very, very smooth and streamlined. It's not a laggy experience. Overall, I'm very hyped how this thing performs and how it looks overall. It's absolutely great and I highly recommend it to each one of y'all. As always, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Smash that thumbs up if you like the way how this CarPlay unit looks or really just found the video helpful at all. And we'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace out.